A couple of weeks back, we did a video where we were testing our Gamo laptops up against each other. As an experiment, we tried testing it with a cooler pad underneath to see how that would affect the result when benchmark testing it. We were surprised to see that it did not affect the result at all. We chewed on that for a while, so we decided to actually purchase a couple of different cooler pads to test them up against each other and see if we can answer the question, do cooler pads really matter? It is worth noting that we are testing on gaming laptops that are built for handling heat and handling pressure. Now, there's a big difference between gaming laptops that are built for gaming and then slim laptops that are built for looking cool but really can't get the heat away from the components. The point is that in these laptops, we have built in fans that will help push away some of the heat that are generated with the, uh, with the hardware. So the question here is, will these cooler patch help alleviate some of the heat issues that uh, gamer laptops will face, but basically can handle on their own? So the three computers I have here are our top models. It is our Shark 7th generation laptop with the 240 hertz monitor. We have a i9 uh, 12th generation processor, an actual desktop processor put inside a laptop. We have a 3070 Ti and we have 32 gigabytes of RAM. So these machines will be put through IDA for uh, stress testing and Valley for uh, stress testing the GPU. So what we have here underneath the laptops are three different coolers. The smallest one we have here is the uh, NZXT Cryo E40, which uh, is a metallic build, which has two small uh, 80 millimeter fans that you can actually place inside the case where you want it. Now this will help you actually place the fans where it is needed. So we could, uh, we could actually move them up so they were directly under the output fan of the laptop. Second, we have the thermal take right here is a massive 20 RGB. I think that's actually the name of this. It's a really, really big cooler pad with RGB that you can control just the way you like it. The cost for the RGB is that it takes up two USB ports instead of just one. It also has stands that you can take up and down if you want to elevate it just a bit. It has a 200 millimeter fan. Now the last one is the Cooler Master ErgoStand 3 and it actually has a 230 millimeter fan which makes it the biggest fan of the three here. It has a couple of nice features. You can uh, elevate it and also has these nice little stands to make sure that the laptop stays in place. One of my favorite features about this one is that you have extra USB ports built in. You have four extra USB ports to compensate for the fact that you are stealing away one USB port for the cooler pad. Out of the three here, the Thermaltake has the fastest fans, so they will hit a higher round per minute when spinning. Now, it did prove to actually have an effect, but we will dive into that later. So even though these are three identical PCs, there are still their chance of winning or failing the silicon lottery, which basically means that even though the hardware is the same, they can have different performance. So what we did is that we tested each and every computer on the different pads to make sure that they were actually uh, performing uh, equally as good. So the three computers here, they perform more or less the same. So we felt comfortable moving forward with the test using three computers like this. But we did test the cooler pads with one laptop to make sure that we could verify the authenticity of the tests. So we started with IDA, the CPU test where we stress test the system. Now, there are a couple of noteworthy things here and I'll, I'll see if I can explain it best way possible. We tested the NZXT, the Thermaltake, the Cooler Master and without 
a cooler pad. They were all throttling. Now, for those of you who doesn't know what throttling is, it is when the computer experiences a specific temperature, it lowers the, uh, the power usage of the component so that it will use and produce less power. It will find a, a point where it is keeping its temperature below the uh, uh, critical state and adjusting your CPU power to that point. Now, in all cases, it landed on 2.9 gigahertz. With the NZXT, it throttled at 15%. Without the NZXT, it throttled at uh, 15% as well. The Cooler Master throttled at 20% and the Thermal Take throttled at 7%. Now, what does this actually mean? Well, to answer the question, you have to look at how the coolers work when set on automatic. When they experience the rise of temperature, they will, with some delay, activate the built-in fans of the computer and start putting out some of the hot air. So there's a gap between uh, acknowledging that the PC is getting hot and before it actually uh, settles on a specific temperature and power usage where the uh, computer is throttling. So it's a spike where the CPU power and performance is lowered. Now, without any cool pass, there was a 15% spike. So what this means is that if you are everything is set to automatic, it will make a short spike where you will uh, experience performance drop and then everything is fine again. Now, this is a normal procedure that happens on PCs. The funny thing is that because the thermal take has a higher speed on their fan, it will actually compensate for this small window where it is lowering the power and the performance. So the thermal take, because of the speed, can actually throw in enough uh, cool air to make that transition softer and smoother, which means that the throttle is lower. Now, if you go to your fan settings and change from automatic to maximal, lo and behold, there will be no throttling at all not on either of the cooler pads, not without a cooler pad. So when you run a CPU test with maxing CPU, you don't throttle if your built-in fans are at maximum. So having a cooler pad under doesn't change anything. So if your computer is set to automatic, which it mostly will be, there is a small thing to gain from having a cooler pad but that it is not where we are looking at actually benefiting from a cooler pad. So let's move on. Next up, Valley. Valley is our GPU testing software where we test the graphics card and how well they perform. So in this case, we tested the PCs with running cooler pads and without. It was funny to see that all of the cooler pads kept the laptop running around 74, 75 degrees. But after around 10 minutes, the uh, NZXT had the temperature go up to around 78, where they, um, the cooler pad and the thermal take kept it around 74, 75. Now, if you remove the laptop from a cooler pad and put it directly on the table, you would see temperatures going up around 80 and 81. This does not mean a drop in frame rate. This does not mean lower performance. It is just taking a toll on the hardware. So having a cooler pad when playing games that are actually somewhat demanding will extend your hardware's lifetime. So in a test setting like this, there's a small difference to the CPU and a little more notable difference to the GPU when using a cooler pad. We have a tendency to use laptops 
on different surfaces that are not and should never be meant for gaming and usage. If you put a laptop on a sofa or in a, uh, on a blanket or in your pants and stuff like that, it is a sure way to kill your laptop, especially if you're using it uh, playing games that are somewhat uh, hardware intensive. It's impossible for the laptop to uh, push away the heat if it's, it's uh, sitting on a not hard surface. So having a cooler pad like this uh, will actually help you uh, alleviate some of the problems that we tend to create ourselves. So if you want to play on your lap or in the sofa instead of a, on a regular desk, having a cooler pad like this really, really does help because you're not only giving it the small boost that we've seen in the test here, you're also prolonging life and preventing it from uh, having to work under cir uh, circumstances that they are not built for. So that's what we are taking away from this test. Yes, cooler pads help, especially if you're using a laptop the wrong way. Cooler pads help less if you have a good laptop, a laptop that's built for gaming. They do have their own way of dispersing the heat. So you hardcore gamers out there with a dedicated desk for your laptop, you will have a small benefit from the cooler pad, especially if you're choosing one with a bigger fan and more fan speed. But if you're using a regular laptop that's not meant for gaming, yes, you will get even more out of a cooler pad. And if you're using uh, your laps for gaming or playing in the sofa, I would most definitely recommend getting one of these ones. The bigger ones here, they actually serve as a kind of a table. So I would, uh, in, in most cases, recommend this. Now, in, in this test, we actually saw that the Cooler Master and the Thermal Take both outperform the smaller uh, NZXT with the smaller 80 millimeter fans. I would recommend one of the bigger ones here, especially because they have some pretty nice features. Uh, my recommendation goes to the Thermal Take here, even though the Cooler Master is a personal favorite of mine, mostly because of the, uh, the fact that you can have USBs plugged in here and it has an uh, angling thing where you can uh, angle the laptop even more. Thank you so much for watching this video. <laughs> it was a pleasure going through all this and boy, I have uh, it's been hot in here with uh, three laptop testing at around 80 degrees, uh, more or less constantly. I hope you guys enjoyed this and if you have any requests for other videos like this, please leave them in the comments below so we can be inspired and create stuff that you guys like. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you actually liked this video. Thank you so much and bye.